elderly are, the, are in the habit of constantly running to their home base to invoke ethnic discrimination each time they fail to win advantages in their struggle over privileges and patronage in the larger national economy. So if a man from Cross River fails to get the rail contract from Uyo to Calabar, he said, because I'm from Calabar now. But when he gets it, he forgets that he's from Calabar. If a contractor fails in his bid for a major federal contract, it must be because the rival elite from other nationalities conspired to marginalize him because of his ethnicity. If a politician fails in netting a key appointment for some reason of equity or merit, it must be because a rival competitor from another region has upstaged him. These intra-elite class feuds are then transmitted to the grassroots as evidence of irreconcilable differences or deliberate marginalization in the country. At this juncture, I make bold to state that the full economic and social benefits of President Buhari's investment in infrastructure will not be fully felt now. It is future generations that will reap the long-term benefits of these bold efforts in our national infrastructure. <laughs> Combating insecurity and criminality Easily the most recurrent and urgent concern in Nigerian public mind today is the spread of insecurity across the nation. I'm merely the Minister of Transportation, therefore I'm not equipped to give you full information on this. I'm not even a police officer, neither am I a military general or a security expert. But I've governed a volatile state for eight years. You remember River State? You remember River State? You saw the difference when I was there as to now in terms of security and insecurity. The difference, the, difference we made, the difference we made then was that we chased the criminals into the water, we provided infrastructure as a tool to create jobs, and we made sure we built hospitals to take away the cost of medical expenses from parents and children, we built schools free of charge and took children to school free of charge to reduce security. I have governed a volatility for eight years, being part of national policy making for over five years with an eight years experience as a speaker in the state's house of assembly. At least I have some idea of what state security entails. In terms of the subject of this lecture, which is the challenge of the national question for Nigeria's future, you will agree with me that increased insecurity in recent times has heightened concerns about the very survival of the nation. From a layman's perspective, I would humbly like to make a decision here between direct challenges to the sovereignty of the nation and the activities of criminal elements who are exploiting the overstretched security capabilities of the state to increase the intensity of their criminality. So you can't say that the reason why they are, we have crime in Nigeria or there's insecurity is because Nigerians want to go their separate ways. They are two different things, even though they have the same economic motivation. One, these criminals want to be fed, they want to make money themselves, they want to take their children to school. The second one the, is class related, which you know the rich men, the elites are coming together. If they don't get enough things from you, they gang up against you and say, because I'm Igbo, because I'm Igwere, or because I'm Aousa, or because I'm Yoruba. There are two different things, and I will show it in, this, in the course of this work. Challenges like Boko Haram, sporadic terrorism, banditry, and other insurgent, insurgent flare ups are active national defense challenges of a great strategic and military nature that have continued to engage the energies of the military. I believe that with time, these challenges will, become, will be overcome by the undisputed and tested professionalism of our military. On the other hand, we now have a plethora of criminal infections, ranging from transactional kidnapping and mass school abductions, armed robbery, cultism, rape, and urban gang warfare. I believe that the correct cure to criminality is stout law enforcement and crime fighting predicated on accurate intelligence and interdiction. In a democracy, the duty of crime fighting belongs to the police, but our system of criminal justice admission must be reinforced and modernized to cope with the increased sophistication and quantum of these criminal infractions. We must now consider the introduction of night courts all over the country and the promotion of a younger crop of magistrates and judges 
to the congested system and ensure prompt prosecution of suspects and quick dispensation of justice. 